Keith, thank you for your time. Uh, I note that the so-called Joint Parliamentary Committee has seven Labor MPs, four Coalition MPs, the Greens' First Nations spokeswoman, Dorinda Cox, and the National Party turned independent, Andrew G. He quit the Nationals over their opposition to The Voice. Keith, how did it go yesterday? Oh, thank you for having me, Alan. Well, yesterday was the final day. We only actually had five public hearing days. And as you're aware, that we didn't have a constitutional convention for this process. So this was supposed to make up for that. I wish we'd had more time, but we were able to cross-examine some significant legal experts, particularly on day one and yesterday. And what we learned, Alan, was that this has risk. Now, uh, many will say, well, don't worry about the risk because the Solicitor General says it's all fine. Uh, but, but he's one person. He won't be sitting on the future High Court. Well, he, he may have aspirations to do that. But, but many judges on the High Court uh, passionately agree mm. uh, on putting their view forward. But in the end, they may be in the minority. And, and that's what happens in a future High Court. We also heard from people like former Justice, High Court Justice Ian Callanan, and he said the risk is higher. Mm. So the risk exists. But there's different views about whether it's yes. low or probable. Yeah, I spoke to Ian Callanan uh, off air last week. We were a function together. But I listened to some of this, especially the questioning of Tony Abbott by Sharon Clayton. Now, I have to say, I fancy I sort of know a bit about federal politics. I've never heard of Sharon Clayton. She's been the Labor member for Newcastle. Sharon, where have you been for 10 years? See, Keith, I'm at a loss to understand what there is to examine. Because when you're talking about a race-based change to the Constitution, it surely makes those arguing in favour of a yes vote guilty of dividing us on the basis of race. Who on earth could support that? Well, and to be fair to Sharon, I, she is the, the Deputy Speaker, and I found her to be a very competent Deputy Speaker. I enjoy <laughs> appearing before her. Um, very good. Look, there's three ways. My apologies there's, to you, Sharon. Three there reasons. You <laughs> That's all right. There's three reasons why you might have suspicions about the proposal. Uh, one is the principle of equality of citizenship. And you're right, there's, there's very little that can be done to the words that will address that. You either think that's a principle that will guide your vote or you don't. There are those that think, well, this will not shift the dial on Indigenous disadvantage. It will be another layer of bureaucracy. And again, the wording doesn't really matter there. But there's a third reason, and that's constitutional risk. And not every Australian is motivated by that, but, but a lot are. And, and right now there is serious risk, particularly in the voice to the executive as it's worded in part two. But 